Todd Holland. At forward for LaSalle, a 6'6 senior from Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Number 25, Jack Hurd. At forward for Fairfield, a 6'3 sophomore from Roselle, New Jersey. Number 23, Craig Martin. At forward for LaSalle, a 6'8 senior from Bangor, Pennsylvania. Number 51, Ron Holland. At center for Fairfield, a 6'7 junior from West Henrietta, New York. Number 34, Drew Henderson. At center for LaSalle, a 6'9 senior from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Number 44, Milko Levers. At guard for Fairfield, a 6'1 sophomore from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Number 32, Johnny Jones. And at guard for LaSalle, a six-foot senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Number 14, Randy Woods. And the other guard for Fairfield, a 6'1 junior from Jersey City, New Jersey. Number 24, Kevin George. And at guard for LaSalle, a 6'4 junior from Slidell, Louisiana. Number 24, Jeff Neubauer. The head coach of Fairfield is Paul Cormier. And for LaSalle, it's Speedy Morris. So the stage is set for the third meeting between these two clubs as Speedy Morris hopes for a shot at NCAA bid. We'll be back with the start of today's game in a moment. Make this the winter you learn to ski better with tips and techniques from ski. And, and, and the kind of shots they're getting will be key. And, you know, LaSalle's going to force the game into a, a high possession kind of game. And as we said, LaSalle heard and Woods will shoot from the street. So Fairfield will get plenty of opportunities to score. It's just a matter if they can shoot at a high percentage. Fairfield has shot well from outside this year. They take a lot of three-pointers. That's part of their offense this year. It's dramatically improved from last year, although their percentage isn't the best. We'll identify the players. They're going to try to hold the ball as much as they can, value the possession to keep this game in the 60s if they possibly can. Yeah, the Explorers certainly would probably like to play an 80s or 90s type game. Pulling up in the corner, Johnny Jones and the sophomore from Bridgeport, Connecticut, averaging 10 points, has given us both the early lead. Here's Jack Hurd. Now, one thing with Newbauer in the game as opposed to Paul Burke, Newbauer will not shoot the ball. Speedy'd like him to shoot the ball more, and there we talk about that range of Randy Woods. He doesn't think anything. He was a foot behind an NBA three-point line. Hurd stepped out of bounds trying to get that rebound. Referee Leroy Hendricks making the call. That's Leroy handling off the ball. The other officials are Jim Hutter and Ron Foxcroft. Kevin George working it out to Craig Martin. He'll play the three. Todd Holland starting at the high post, number 42. He'll play limited time. He's the senior captain, but he's been starting lately. Fairfield plays basically, again, without a true point guard. Johnny Jones was really switched to that position and gives up a lot of himself to play the number one position. Fairfield, as you said earlier, Whitey, will stay with, Loy uh, with LaSalle. Then what's happened in the two previous games, LaSalle has one of those patented runs and just uh, blows right by you. Off the miss, Randy Woods will push it up. Craig Martin missing that last shot. Great look inside, and it's put home. Beautiful look to the Milkman, Milko Lever. You have to respect Randy Woods so much when he has the ball, as we see the turnover, that therefore you forget how good a passer he is. Down court, lead up and in by Randy Woods. Ron Holland with that long pass down court. Give the assist to Holland. One thing you and I certainly hope is that that run that LaSalle makes isn't in the beginning of the game. That's quite true, Whitey, and wherever you're watching, on Sports Channel. Hope that you'll enjoy the game. Henderson along the baseline. He'll have to score, not only rebound. He had 21 rebounds the last time these clubs played. Now they'll bring it up. This is the heady Jeff Neubauer out of Slidell, Louisiana. Doesn't turn it over much. Great ratio of assists to turnovers when he did play a lot early in the year. Randy Woods will take the three. If Randy Woods, if he gets left open like that, he might score 100 points. Five points for Woods. That was his 101st three-pointer that he has made this year among the leaders in the nation a number of uh, three-pointers made that's a career for a lot of people I mean career three pointers well, uh, in the first game Iona had made 71 by a team all year <laughs> so he had made 30 more 
than I automate as a team. Craig Martin missing. They can't afford to miss those shots. And Hurd getting the rebound. Randy Woods with uh, five of his team's seven points. Good rebound, Jack Hurd in the lane and in the basket. And the milkman, Lee Hurst, is fouled. So the young man from Amsterdam, Holland, will go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. I think there's nothing that makes Speedy Morris more happy than to have LaSalle run away and hide in this game. And you see a great inside pass. It's the second good internal pass LaSalle has played. Milko Lieberz finishes the play. But my point I was starting to make was they need to get a good run here, have their starters sit, because when you're playing night after night after night with depleted forces, Paul Burke's not playing. Milko Lieberz is playing one-legged. He needs to rest Lieberz as much as possible. So I'm sure he'd like to see some kind of blowout here. Five points for Lieberz. Tim Schwartz now in the ball game, thrown away on the bad pass by Johnny Jones. He was looking for Tim Schwartz who has replaced uh, Brad Holland very quickly in this game. Schwartz is just a, Todd Holland. <laughs> Schwartz is just a hard-nosed kind of player. Uh, does a lot of those intangible type things. We'll get his hand on the ball a lot. So here, out at the high post is Levers. Inside to Brad Holland, another physical player with that hook. And Schwartz the rebound, and a rebounding foul will be called on LaSalle. They got Brad Holland after attempting the hook shot. Went over the top. Boy, Holland, 6'8", 245. Looks a little heavier than that, boy. He does. He looks absolutely square. <laughs> now he's breaks it down to his haircut. He has one of those flat tops. Kind of interesting. Randy Woods has not had big ball games against Fairfield this year. He's not shot well. He's had about 21 and 22 points. And he and Jack Hurd have both shot poorly against them. Johnny Stags. Jones. Off to Henderson. Blocked, but a foul will be called on Leverse. See, Paul Corbin would like to see Drew Henderson more involved in the offense. And certain, like a zebra doesn't change his stripes. You can't make Drew Henderson into a scorer if he just has, doesn't have the interest. He just is not meant to be a scorer. He's always looking pass first. He can see him take the ball hard to the basket. Uh, Henderson, a terrific player, but he really would be a better player if they had a high scoring forward standing next to him. He'll get another one. So Drew Henderson averaging 15 points and leading the MAC conference for the second year in a row. First team back all-star, averaging 11 and a half rebounds. And it's now a 10 to four ball game. Early in the first half, LaSalle leads by six. Albany, the capital of New York State, in the capital Saratoga region, discover its many advantages. From historical architecture to today's futuristic Empire State Plaza, Join us for our many family events and festivals along the scenic Hudson River. Professional sports abound and are one of the many year-round attractions. Or spend an evening enjoying the performing arts, from Broadway quality shows to symphony orchestras. Be our guest. For information, call 1-800-622-8464. Cold filtered. Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered its real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. In today's business climate, a luxury suite at Spectrum 2 is part of what it takes to be successful. The privacy and comfort of a suite makes you feel special. Service and the food are wonderful. And best of all, there's an incredible view of Flyers and Sixers action. My company just signed up for a suite in the new arena. It's good for our business and it's great fun. Whether you're interested in a suite or super box seats, call today. Barry Landers along with Whitey Rigsby at the Knickerbock Arena. And let's take a look right now at the Mac All Rookie Team and it's a dandy team. Ramey and Craig Wise were named co-rookies of the year in the MAG Conference. Jamal Marshall, Manhattan, what a job he's done. Paul Burke, who's injured, out with the appendectomy. Stuart Downing, Brian Pendleton, and Brent Kell. A lot of guards there. Yeah, I think Ramey's going to be a terrific player in this league. And, uh, of course, Craig Wise, a high, high-scoring player from Philadelphia, high school, public league in Philadelphia. He had 25 points in the loss to St. Peter's yeah, last that, night in the 8-9 game. He had over 50 in a game in high school. Heard missing and Leverse with the rebound. 
And boy, Lieber's off to a great start. He is killing him inside. He has seven points early here. I think Moko Lieberson came just running down the floor. He kind of grimaced the one time when he puts it, that left leg down on the floor. And Speedy says he needs like his fourth operation as soon as the season's over. That's a tough break. He's really improved dramatically, Whitey. He plays with so much emotion. He really plays an upbeat kind of game and uh, a lot of emotion in his play. On the baseline, Schwartz short and Hurd with the rebound. You know, one thing that I was going to ask you, Whitey, if the possibility of the uh, LaSalle Club coming out may be a little overconfident, maybe not with emotion, but you see that kind of emotion on the floor by Levers, but maybe looking ahead, maybe a little overconfident, looking maybe to the semifinals. Well, I got to look at their itinerary for the weekend. And their itinerary continues right through to Monday night. <laughs> right, so they are confident. There's no reason they shouldn't be because they generally make it to Monday night game and they make it to the final. And uh, Like I said to you earlier, I think Speedy would really like to see them win this game big, not being a nail-biter because then they, he can rest some people, in particular Leavers. And that's uh, Lee Hurst working in the lane against Henderson. Misses his shot. Henderson stripped of the ball. Hurt, look at that pass. Holland missing. And a foul on the rebound. It'll go against... LaSalle, but they are banging the board. Milko Levers needs to get his shots and his points in the flow of the game. Uh, he is not a go-to guy on this team. He never has been. He never will be. Now with Woods and, and Hurd on the board, he needs to get his shots from garbage, from Woods going to the basket and dishing off. One-on-one -on -one offensively, they're not counting on Milko Levers to get a lot of points for them. Well, you wouldn't think that LaSalle would be the leading rebounding team in the league, but they average over 39 a game. That's primarily because they take so many shots and get a lot of long rebounds off those missed threes. Hurd quickly up court, Randy Woods. Back up court, and Hurd will finish it off. A terrific pitch out, I think it was by Jeff Neubauer to start the play. And again, Randy Woods, you have to respect Woods, and therefore when he gives it up, usually the, his teammate is wide open. Boy, Paul Cormier wants to talk it over, his team down by 10. We'll be back, 13.54 to go in the first half, and LaSalle up by 10. Highlight, Larry. What do you got on the score? Now, you can get every magic moment all on one incredible video. Magic Johnson, always showtime. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, the nation's number one sports weekly. Call this toll-free number now to follow the leader up and down the court from high school to college to the pros. Magic keeps winning with a spirit and style that changed the NBA. Don't miss the rookie's first NBA championship. Enjoy all the battles with the legendary Larry Bird as they fight for the last shot. Magic down the middle, just what I thought. A hook shot at 12. Yeah! Call now to subscribe or renew. Get your free video plus 54 issues of SI, including the swimsuit issue, for only $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. The magic of Urban Johnson will always be something special. Treasure it forever. And every week, enjoy all the emotion and drama of sports in Sports Illustrated. The RCA 8mm camcorder is so small and light, you'll take it everywhere. That way you won't miss a thing. It also gives you great color in almost any light. Come on, give me the slippers. Like we say, you won't miss a darn thing. And when you go from one subject to the next, it focuses instantly. The RCA 8mm camcorder. Another way we're changing entertainment again. You talk about transition baskets and how you get out on a fast break. Block shots, rebounds, or steal. There you see a terrific outlet pass in the air. Looked like Wes Unseld. A great finish of the play by Woods and Hurd. Indeed, and Milko Levers is in quite a story here in the first uh, half. Seven points, but he'll sit down right now with two fouls as we have a substitution in the ballgame. Ray Schultz, who seldom gets in, number 24, number 34, rather, is in the ballgame. Ray is a 6'9", 230-pound junior. I think Schultz, along with Cliff Wooten, are going to get a lot of minutes. Uh, like I said before, I think in particular because Paul Burke being out and also because of Levers being hurt. Schwartz count the basket for the former walk-on who won a job last year. He transferred from Marquette where he didn't play basketball and 
Did a good job last year and has been starting most of the year. He'll go to the line to try to complete a three-point play, averaging about seven a game. And Bernie Saplicki on the floor now also for the Stags. They need some shooters. He's a shooter, a three-point type shooter. So here's Schwartz, who had a high of 21 against Fairleigh Dickinson. And he completes the three-point play, and the lead is now seven. LaSalle went on a 10-point run earlier in this first half. In case you're just tuning in, they trailed 2 0 Let it 10 to 2. Randy Woods will try for three. Oh, what a sweet stroke this guy has. And he just keeps on moving just a little bit further out. You think there's no way he's going to shoot from there. LaSalle changes up the defense a little bit, goes to his own. You know, a trapping kind of zone in the corners. Woods with two three-pointers. That's Siplicki. That, that change in the defense is a response to Siplicki being on the floor. He's a good outside shooter. Henderson triple teamed to the lane. Knocked away. Schwartz got it and got fouled. So the opportunity there for Tim Schwartz as he hustled that ball down in the midst of traffic. Schwartz is a timing kind of guy. You know, being in the right place at the right time. Well, as Paul Cormier likes to put it, and Paul coached at Dartmouth, he's a cerebral player. Cerebral player. That's the kind of player Cormier was, because he couldn't play a lick. <laughs> he had to use his brains. Here you go. You see the foul, the grab by Neubauer. Again, this team, this LaSalle team, doesn't have the depth they once had. Uh, again, part of that depth is sitting over here listening to the radio. Paul Burke, who's sitting on the sidelines, along with um, Milko Levers being down, they're going to really have to go a little bit deeper into the bench than Speedy would like to. Well, it's an excellent free throw shooter, makes one of two. Against LaSalle, the last game he had seven points. And right now he's cut the deficit here to 17 to 8. This is Schultz. Neubauer going back door as Woods will back it out. So Woods running the show right now. The name we haven't mentioned the entire game is Kevin George. For Fairfield, hasn't really been involved in play. And counted for a show. Little jump hook. So Ray Schultz with a bucket. That's Martin. Craig Martin averaging eight points a ball game. Back out to Kevin George. Averaging almost 15 a game, and as you said, Whitey, he hasn't had the ball much. Hasn't had the ball. Uh, like I said, you know when the announcers don't mention the guy's name for a while, he's not doing anything. Especially if you're the point guard. <laughs> Especially if you're a scorer, he's supposed to get 15 a game. Kevin George and Johnny Jones have alternated this year playing the point. They don't really, as you said, have a true point guard. George in trouble off to the corner, and Johnny Jones will miss the jumper. Schultz with the rebound. Neubauer. Now we'll run things. We'll get a couple of substitutions uh, to be made right now. Good Randy defense Woods with the fall away. Real Henderson good defense. The rebound. Bernie Saplicki right with Randy Woods. Woods probably should have tried to make another move. Saplicki forces the offense there. We'll get a foul call. Now they called Saplicki for traveling. Kind of stumbled in towards the basket. So Johnny Jones will check back into the ball game. Kevin George and Tim Schwartz will sit down. Interesting kind of call right there. I don't know if that was a travel. And Chris Barry has checked in for the first time. The 6'6 rugged freshman who was a red shirt last year. Number 43 for Fairfield. Another guy, Barry, who plays real hard. Plays position defense. He's guarding Ray Schultz. Now LaSalle likes to turn up the defensive tempo. Force turnovers. Randy Woods in and out. Martin had it knocked away by Hurd, but he gets the ball back. Ziplicki. Could have taken that shot. He's not looking for a shot. He's out there to shoot. Barry goes hard to the glass. Henderson mistimed the jump. And the rebound pulled down by Blitzwood. There's a great seven freshman. We saw him look good earlier in the season, Whitey. I guess uh, against St. Peter's. St. Peter's. Good. Heard nailing that three. Actually, they're going to call it a two. And it makes it 21 to 8. Hurd's another one. We hadn't really mentioned his name much. And I tell you, if Hurd gets going along with Woods, it's turned out the lights. Four points for Jack Hurd, averaging almost 18 a game. He and Randy Woods coming into the game had almost 200 three pointers. Saplicki. Two of the all time leading scorers in the South Explorer basketball history. And quite a fine tradition of scores they've had over the years. Hurd will try a three this time. Short. Randy Woods, who in one game had 13 rebounds earlier this year, gets fouled, picking up that long rebound. Foul, 
Johnny Jones and Wood saying hello to each other in their own <laughs> special way. Well, that's, some, that's something we want to keep our eye on, and Wood certainly wasn't knocked down that hard. And of course, if Johnny Jones' forearm is that good, he should be on the offensive line for the Eagles. Nine points for Randy Wood. You know, Whitey, we mentioned a couple of times that Randy had not shot well against Fairfield in the two previous games. One game he was 6 for 23, 1 for 11 from three-point range. The other game he was 7 for 22 and 2 for 11 from three-point range. Yeah, and still they both games were double-digit big wins for the Explorers. Explorers, again, change defense, go to half-court trap. Woods can really hurt you defensively, too, because he's very active and he knows the passing leads. Well, he leads the league in steals with two and a half a game. He's in just about every offensive category. The player of the year, Randy Woods. Henderson, look at Jones. Out open Saplicki. He'll take the three. Saplicki spotted up that time. He has to make the three. Barry with a strong rebound and follow. And the lead now is down to 13 at 23 to 10. Now Neubauer against Saplicki. Woods gets that off so quickly. Schultz doing a good job. Back to Woods. Schultz going back up. And Martin with the rebound. A lot of opportunities for the Explorers. Not many players would miss that first shot and be ready to shoot another one so quickly. Open Saplicki off the drive by Johnny Jones that set it up. Good play by Saplicki. Good shot there. It's one of the most difficult shots you can take. Got eight feet out on the side. You really have a diff difficulty with your depth perception. Saplicki averaging about six a game. they getting his first bucket. Hurd wanted to launch that one. Great pass. Randy Woods is fouled. Great pass by Hurd. Hurd and Woods really see each other on the floor. They know they're both terrific shooters, and they really know where each other are when they're on the floor. Foul is on Bernie Saplicki. It's his first and the third team foul. Hurd really wanted the ball. And Woods can see he's wide open. Saplicki missed an assignment there, and he paid for it. So Randy Woods, who is third in the league in free throw shooting, will get another one here. He's taken 201 free throws coming in, 81.6 percentage. And he's made 164. We got a substitution. Jack Hurd will sit down, and Lutiki Colombo, number five, has come in for LaSalle. So Woods now double figures with 11. And the lead is 12. Speedy Morris upset with, with Randy Woods that time in that layup because he shot it left handed. He wanted to shoot it right handed with a strong hand. Wooten blocked that shot by Henderson. Neubauer quickly up court. Open is Schultz. And Henderson, the Mac leading rebounder, quickly up court. Kevin George in the lane. And in the basket. So Kevin George averaging 15 gets his first two. If Drew Henderson can dominate the glass, Fairfield has an opportunity to stay in this game. He, he has to get his usual 15 to 20 type rebounds. Colombo, the freshman. Woods too quick for Kevin George. <laughs> Open Neubauer, and he'll say he's out try a three. Neubauer's an excellent shooter. Jeff just has to shoot the ball more. He, he's too conscious of where Hurd and Woods are on the floor, never looking for his own offense. Johnny Jones missing. Barry going up. Henderson going up and gets the roll. Speedy Morris is going to get upset with his team shortly. He keeps on giving up second and third opportunities for the Stags. Four points for Henderson. And Fairfield, one of the weaker rebounding teams in the MAC, which is incredible when they have Drew Henderson, who's the best rebounder in the league. Nobody else, though. He's got to get every rebound practically for him. Colombo. Side to Wooten to turn around over Henderson. And Barry with a good box out of the rebound. They're down now by 11. They can cut it under double digits here. And Johnny Jones with a drive. Does exactly that. Went for the foul. Might have been fouled with the body. Four point lead. Four points for Johnny Jones, averaging 10. And Fairfield. Like they've done all year, hanging tough. They've lost some pretty close ball games. Wooten trying to get that ball on the floor with Henderson. And typical of their recent play, hustling. Johnny Jones opens a plucky for three. Bullseye! Great play that time. Great team play by Fairfield. Zipplicki really started it off with the defense, making the, slapping the ball out of the Explorers' hands. And that 14-point lead is down to six. Like you said, the Stags tend to hang around. They hang around, and again, this isn't the kind of game Speedy wants. Speedy with Morris wants a 10 to 15-point lead at halftime. Back there is a little bit quiet. Not 
too quiet there with that move. Count the basket and a foul called after the basket on Randy Woods. Randy Woods really had a mindset that time to take the ball to the basket. I think Drew Henderson saw it the whole way. I'm not sure, I'm not sure why they give him the basket here. Contact. Still has the ball. Should have been no basket. Time out of the floor right now, and LaSalle leading the Fairfield Stags by eight. What's new for PRISM in 92? That depends on which PRISM you're talking about. For this PRISM, the new year brings more Flyers and Sixers games than any other channel on TV. For this Geo Prism, 1992 brings a 1.6 liter 16 valve engine, multi-port fuel injection, rack and pinion steering, a spacious interior, a full complement of standard features, and four new colors. It's a Geo Prism with a new look for 92. Prism and your Chevrolet Geo dealers want you to have something new in 92. A brand new 1992 Geo Prism sedan. Just tell us how many times you hear the word Prism, either Prism with an S or Prism with a Z in this announcement. And send the correct number with your name, address, and telephone number to PRISM Geo PRISM Contest, P.O. Box 1252, Ballakinwood, PA 19004. Enter now and be sure to watch the new and improved PRISM in 92 for some hints that could help you win a brand new 1992 Geo PRISM. What does PRISM have for you in 92? Annie Hall, Awakening, Gremlins 2, The Grifters, Guilty by Suspicion, The Last Emperor, New Jack City, Reunion, To Sleep With Anger, Tune In Tomorrow, My Blue Heaven, More Flyers Action, More Sixers Action. For great movies and exclusive home team sports on one channel, there's only one channel for you in 92, Prism. Call your cable company and get the best entertainment on cable TV. I'm not so sure the ref made the right call here. I think it was a charge. And Randy Wood's mindset here is, I'm taking the ball to the bacon. And Drew Henderson stands in. Now watch the contact. Boom. Still has the ball. So there's no way they should allow the basket. I think it was a charge all the way. No basket. I think Speedy got a break there. Brad Tracy will be talking to you after the game, Whitey. Brad Tracy is a guy I've known for 25 years. I saw him yesterday. Terrific guy and a very good official. Well, it's their seventh team foul, so Henderson will shoot. They're over the limit, so it's the one-and-one -one situation. Henderson with four points, not a good free throw shooter. 59%, and as we mentioned, because he plays such a physical, strong game, and his points come in the paint, he's been to the line 175 times it, this year. He would, you would think he'd go to the foul line a lot, but he has to make his free throws, especially here because you know, he made a good defensive play, and if he doesn't make the free throws, a good defensive play goes for naught. Well, it negates the basket scored by Woods, and it's down to a six-point ball game again. Jeff Neubauer running the show with Paul Burke out with an appendectomy. Randy Woods is 4 of 11 from the floor. And two of those four for three-pointers. Randy Woods rarely comes out of the game. What great stamina he has. Heard inside throws it away, and Henderson comes up with a loose ball. Fairfield hanging around, hanging around in this ball game. In the ball game now is Keith Willard, number 11. Keith Willard, the son of Ralph Willard, the Western Kentucky coach and former Rick Pitino teammate at St. Dominic's High School on Long Island. Only you Long Island guys would know something like that. Well, Ralph uh, coached a little bit of that for Rick as an assistant. Batted around, no foul inside. Look at that volleyball game. Look at Drew Henderson. Stay with the ball. Boy, what concentration. And we'll get a jump ball called, and LaSalle will get the ball on the alternate possession here. It was a little interesting foray right there. It seemed like Drew Henderson, someone had a foul. Drew Henderson, I think sometimes when you're so big and strong, it's like the Moses Malone mentality. They just let you go get pounded a while before they decide to call the foul. Well, certainly Martin thought there was going to be a foul called. This is Blitz Wooten. Jack Hurd turning and pairing the three. He had Craig Martin right with Jack Hurd is one of those shooters. He and Woods are so similar in the way they shoot. They just sling it up there, and they just have no real range to their shot. Hurd with seven. The lead is back to nine. Henderson in heavy traffic. Off to Martin. He slices, stolen away. Good play, Hurd. Up court, Randy Woods. And Willard just backed off. But you see how Hurd, as soon as he got the ball, he knew he could look ahead. He just tossed the ball ahead, let the ball bounce two or three times for Woods to pick it up. Randy Woods averaging almost 27 a game now with 15. And the lead is back to double figures. It had been down to six a moment ago. Willard will try the three and hit it. Keith Willard from the corner. 
That's a surprise performer to get some points out of a, you know, his fourth guard. Willard's been getting a little more playing time of late. Hurd fouled as he unleashed the shot. Only the fourth team foul on Fairfield. Speedy Morris a little unhappy there. Speedy looks like he has to tighten that belt a little bit. He's ready. Speedy's ready for the golf season. Well, he doesn't want his season to end. They lost last year up here in the semifinals to St. Peter's, the eventual winner. They beat uh, Iona. And in case you're just tuning in, Iona, a surprise winner over Loyola earlier this afternoon, 59-53, as Jack Hurd will have another one. Jack Hurd only 72% from the free throw line. Should be better. Jack Hurd should be in an 80% free throw shooter. As good a shooter as he is, he has to just concentrate when he gets to that charity strap. By the way, Derek Canada led Iona with 17 points. And Iona will advance to play the winner of tonight's game between Manhattan and St. Peter's. The winner of this game will play the winner of the Siena Niagara game to be played tonight here at 7 o'clock. Barry guarded by Wooten. See, Wooten doesn't respect Barry's shot. He's really banging in, playing down low, almost double teaming on Drew Henderson. Backing it out is Johnny Jones. They've got to get points from Kevin George. And Johnny Jones, they average about 25 points a game, the two guards combined. This is Martin. Nice pick, and he buried the shot. Used the screen well, where he kind of circled around. They called curl, curl move. First points for Martin, who averages eight, the sophomore from Roselle, New Jersey. And they're hanging in here. Fairfield down by seven. Why, every time you think it's going to... It was up to 14, down to six. 11, down to seven. And the South people are going to get impatient here. <laughs> Neubauer says, I've got the open shot again. I'll try it. This time he misses. And Fairfield will get the ball back. We've got a timeout of the floor with 3.21 to go in the first half for the Explorers lead the Stags by seven. Why does Marine Midland work so well for so many? You can talk to us. Talk savings with Lynn Welch. Her interest has helped hundreds earn more interest. Education, see Linda Gilbert. She's put 1,300 kids through college, including two of her own. It's not just billions in assets or hundreds of branches that make us what we are. Marine people do it so well because they do it so much. So let's work it out together. See Bill Ryan. He spent the last five years thinking retirement for folks like these. Admiral and Lady Billingsley of Devonshire. Lord and Lady Atherton of Sussex. Sir Alfred and Lady Sheffield of Dunsmore. And Bob of Buffalo. New York Lotto. Hey, you never know. I used to beat the competition with a convincing fake and a pretty good slam dunk. But in the business world, those moves don't work. What does work are super box seats at Spectrum 2, the new arena. There's indoor parking, a VIP entrance, big comfortable seats, and a sensational view of all the Sixers and Flyers action. In business, I know what it takes to be successful. And when Spectrum 2 opens, you better believe the doctor will be in. Metro Atlantic all academic team led by Jack Hurd and Bruce Schroeder. Look at those numbers. Those are impressive numbers, GPAs. And not only on top of that, Jack Hurd and Bruce Schroeder named to the National Academic All-America team. Two of the five players in the country coming from the MAC conference. That's quite an honor for the conference. And uh, just a terrific job by Jack Hurd and Schroeder in particular with the whole group. That's any two semesters of mine totaled together right there. <laughs> 3.4. Whitey, that's not what you told me earlier. You said you were a good student at Villanova. I said I was a good liar. <laughs> Heard battling for it, goes out of bounds. It'll still be Fairfield ball. By the way, Bruce Schroeder, the late word is that he got hurt in practice and has a, an, a problem. He may not play tonight. I saw him earlier here today on crutches, and they've been working on him last night. They worked on him again today. He's such a tough, tough kid that he's probably going to play. He hurt his ankle, and uh, he's, on, he's so bad that he is on crutches, and uh, I can't imagine Bruce Schroeder not playing in a game uh, at, at any point in time unless he's a broken leg. And, uh, he's a shooter, but what they need him more for is the intangibles and also to shoot along with the Reeves Benjamin. He's the blood and guts of that Siena team, averaging 16 a game and does a great job inside on rebounding for a guard. 
to get a foul called here. And against that big front court of Niagara, they're going to need all the rebounding help they can get. And it'll really hurt not, not having shorter rebound, like you say, and that's the kind of thing that really could be thrown off by having a bad ankle. And, you know, back to the game we have in front of us, this game is about to become a five-point game if Kevin George can make these two. There's Paul Burke now without his appendix. <laughs> we saw him a, two weeks or two ago with his He's an exciting appendix. player. That's a big miss by George. They had a chance to cut it to five. George with only two points. He's uh, averaging almost 15 a game. The second leading scorer to Drew Henderson. Here's Jack Hurd who has eight points. Fairfield doing a great job on the ball. Now they switched off Henderson on, on Hurd. That's not the matchup Fairfield wants. Schwartz couldn't control it. And Randy Woods, the opportunist, now with 17 points. When you're giving up garbage best to Randy Woods, you're in trouble. You have to make him work for his points. Now Woods, who has not played well against them earlier, having a good game here. Tapped around, and Jack Hurd comes up with it. They're so explosive. The alley-oop inside for Wooten. Whoa. No, no basket. It's going to be a good call by the official. Foul on Blitz Wooten. <laughs> An interesting attempt by Randy Woods, throwing the ball that high to Wooten. He must have caught Wooten's eye as he was running down the right-hand wing. Wooten went up high, but definitely didn't go over the back by the Fairfield play. Good call by the official. Many times you won't see them make that call. You kind of give credit to the, the team who has the ball to start, and you call a foul against the defender. Uh, Wooten could certainly run and jump. He has been a MAC Rookie of the Week uh, twice this year. And at the line is Tim Schwartz with four points. Young man out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Speedy Morris complaining of the ball. It was an alley if he was going after the ball, but you have to call a foul on whoever committed it just because your team has the ball. And many times what you see is, Barry, you see the play where they throw the alley -oop. The ball is over the cylinder, and yet the offensive guy's allowed to touch it. The defender isn't. Well, and that's not yeah. fair. Two important front ends of one and ones missed on the last two possessions by Fairfield. You can't afford to do that when you're trying to make up points against LaSalle because they make them so easily. And when you struggle with your scoring, you have to take those opportunities when you have the when you have the chance, you get to the foul and you have to make your free throws. Speedy Morris has his palms open looking at the bench saying, hey, when are we going to wake up and play some smart basketball? He's still fully closed though, which is, <laughs> at this point of the game is, is pretty good. He the jacket's does like still a, on. He the, does his shirt. He's on the sideline. The tie's still there. Johnny Jones lost it against the checking of Randy Woods. Having a word with Jack Hurd, more than a word. <laughs> Many words. <laughs> we saw Joe Mahalik in the background there, you know, terrific young assistant coach. Jack, the academic All-American. Certainly Mahalik was no academic All-American. Randy Woods missing. Boy, you really ripping some guys who are nice to you, Whitey. Joe Joe's Mahalik, a great guy. I played against him in high school. Joe Mahalik, of course, won a game this year as LaSalle coach, but Speedy Morris missed it inside Henderson. Well, what happened to Speedy in that game? Well, they, they found out as we see the ball out of bounds. Oh, well, Speedy's taking his clothes off. Here we go, folks. He said to him, he'll be going over to Admiral Wilson Boulevard there in Camden soon <laughs> on that strip. Speedy Morris had some heart problems. They thought he was having a, a, a problem with his heart, and he checked into the hospital. I told him at the time that I thought it was a good thing they checked. At least they found out that he had a heart. And watch Speedy on the sideline. There's the jacket! Back to the live action in just a moment here. Craig Martin just missed a shot. And it's still a 37-28 ball game. We're just talking about Speedy. And at least the coat covers up the belly he's pounding there. Randy Woods stumble. Wooten, the opportunist, will jam it. Randy Woods exhorting to the crowd to get going. He doesn't realize he, he's not in the Civic Arena there in Philly. 11-point ball game, Johnny Jones. This is Craig Martin with 55 seconds oh, to go. Monster basket there, a big basket to get it under 10. Their last four possessions, they've come up empty. Two missed free throws, a couple of bad shots. And they got the ball back a couple of times and playing good defense. LaSalle's going to try to run the clock down a little bit. Got a four-second differential. They cut the deficit under 10. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Dave Sims will have a special halftime report. Randy Woods against Johnny Jones. 25 now on the shot clock. Now they're going to look to get the ball to Woods just to create something. If not his own shot, create something for somebody else. He's much quicker than Johnny Jones. Look at that move. Wooten open. Off the nice drive. Trip to the ball out of bounds and freshman will go back. The freshman shot the ball a little bit quicker than Speedy would have liked, but, but Woods came up with the ball. And this crowd is firmly against Randy Woods now because after that last dunk, he kind of was waving towards the crowd and they didn't take too kindly to that. Randy Woods with 17 first half points. Randy Woods, player of the year in this league. And deservedly so. What a season he's had. Neubauer lost it. No, they say Fairfield touched it. Neubauer will get 
His team the ball back here with Hurd to trigger. Just six seconds left on the halftime clock. And this is Holland with the turnaround shot. Good for Braun Holland. His first two points, and that'll do it. So LaSalle takes a 11-point lead to halftime. It looked like they were about to blow them out. They got it down to six. And uh, just could Fairfield, as typical of the Fairfield team, just couldn't get over the hump. I think if it was under 10, it would be somewhat of a moral victory for Fairfield. They did a great job staying in the game. Early on, we'll see how much, what kind of a tire speed he has on when he comes out for the second half and how pleased he is with the halftime score. Think he might wearing that? Yeah, it'll cover him up a little bit. <laughs> we'll go to halftime with LaSalle leading Fairfield by 11. semifinal game that'll be played later this afternoon of course the men's semifinal doubleheader we know one team already in it and that is uh, the very fine Iona Gales who played a real good defensive game they were led by Derek Canada with 17 points Hart playing before the home folks had a good ball game 14 points and uh, eight rebounds in that game make sure you get a good night's sleep tonight Barry I don't want to have to carry you tomorrow through three games all right, looking at the scoring in this uh, ball game for Fairfield, didn't get much out of the guards. Kevin George, one for two from the field. Johnny Jones, two for four. Those guys have to score if they're going to stay in this game. Kevin George has to get more involved in the play. Forget about just the flat-out scoring. He has to get more involved. I mean, we mentioned, we, we said we haven't talked about Kevin George's name at all, and he needs to be a guy that we talk about all the time for the Stags. And there's Craig Martin, who had four points. Drew Henderson, who's been doing a good job rebounding and scoring, one for seven from the field in that first half. Drew Henderson, you know, rebounds well, but he has to make some shots. Fairfield got 14 points off the bench, and that helped him come back into the ball game, Whitey, late in the first yeah, half. Bernie Saplicki did a good job for Paul Farmer coming off the bench. And they've got to get shots from that corner like that from Kevin George. And George now with five points. I'm sure Paul Cormier talked to George at halftime. He said, hey, Kevin, you have to get involved. We need you out there to score some buckets for us. Randy Woods working on Johnny Jones. The shot missed. And Leavers, who played a real big part in the early part of the game before he picked up a couple of quick fouls, goes up and gets fouled here. Uh, Milka only played six minutes in the first half. He picked up a couple of quick fouls, but also I think Speedy would really like to rest him as much as he possibly can because he has a real bad knee. Leavers had seven points, shooting three for four from the field in that first half. Seven points in six minutes. Randy Woods picking up where he left off. He has 20 now. Woods shooting seven for 15. Also had six rebounds and five assists in that first half. Randy Woods will tend to get a lot of rebounds. He, he really has a nose for the ball. And uh, As far as passing the ball, you have to respect his shot so much he can go pass you and then deliver. Tim Schwartz to Henderson. Open in the corner, George. He'll try again and hit a three. Kevin George him up a little bit at halftime. Has made 53 three-pointers. He's shooting well from the outside range, 38% from three-point range. Newbauer over to Hurd. Boy, Hurd spins it in and out. Tough luck. He really releases that so quickly on that turnaround. He knows where he is on the floor. Martin will pull up. And the rebound pulled down by Burley, Ron Holland. Newbauer backing it out, looking to set it up. Looking for Woods. Randy so quick, hustled to death. He's really about 5'11", Randy, and people say six, but what do you think his pro chances are? Wise? I think they're very good, and I think it's people like Spud Webb and Muggsy Bogues, Tim Hardaway, the success of those guys, let's face it, they don't do anything that Randy Woods can't, and he has better range than all three of them as far as just flat-out shooting. Nine for Leavehurst. And the lead is now up to 10, 46-36, two minutes into the second half. The lob for Henderson, Johnny Jones, and Henderson not connecting there. Not, not a bad play by Johnny Jones, but Drew Henderson has to go and get the ball. And, uh, to take it a step further as far as Randy Woods at the next level, he has to prove to people that he can run a team. Defensively, man-to-man, -man, he has NBA strength. I mean, he could play the other point guards in the league, the Johnny Dawkins and the Mark Jacksons of the world, because he's physically strong enough. But uh, he's going to have to prove to the NBA people that he can run a team and not just be a, a, a shooter. Leavehurst was looking back door for Neubauer. Ball knocked out of bounds, and Leroy Hendricks getting an argument there from a couple of the players. Barry will inbound as the ball goes over to Fairfield. One former outstanding guard for LaSalle, Dougie Overton, didn't make it in the NBA. And understand now he's playing in Australia. I, I understand the same thing. He had a tough stretch that, toward late in the season. He hurt his ankle, never really got on track, did not play well in the Detroit Pistons camp. 
maybe he'll get another invite back this season. Detroit needs guards. You know, they, they don't have much after Dumars and, and uh, Isaiah Thomas, so maybe Doug will get a chance. Nice try by Martin, but it wouldn't go down. Down court, the long pass, and Randy Woods finishes it. Right there, no go Levers looked like John Elway faking into the flats and then throwing deep. And Randy Woods ran the post. And the young man from Holland uh, picking up those football passes. Huh? Down, down and out. Well, down, out, and up. <laughs> got the World League of Football. They're That's playing right. football all over Europe in Barcelona and London. Johnny Jones with a nice shot in the lane. Guards getting involved for Fairfield. I'm sure Paul Cormier said, look, guys. You've got to do it. You've our, been our scorers along with Drew Henderson all year. We need you. If we lose this one, we can rest tomorrow. <laughs> Six points for Johnny Jones. Paul Cormier has had this team play tough all year. Even though their record is 8-19 and, and only 4-12 and in league play, especially at home, Whitey, they battle teams right down to the wire, including Manhattan and uh, several tough teams. Big win late in the season at home against Iona. You know, that got him out of that 8-9 game. Now Paul Cormier's taking his jacket off. Well, they had a chance to beat Rice, who just won their 20th game playing up at Fairfield. And lost that in the closing seconds. Nice dish off, but Holland, surprised, couldn't hang out of the ball. Holland's going to take his seat next to Speedy now, and Ray Schultz will come to the game. When you get the ball like that from Randy Woods, you have to get the ball, and you have to lay it in the basket. And Speedy's just saying, I can't play it. If you don't catch that when you put it in, I can't play it. LaSalle by 10. Trying to beat this team for the 13th time in a row. George has been hot. Bullseye again. Well, they have to get the ball in Kevin George's hands now. And LaSalle has to find a way to try to prevent him from getting the ball. 11 for Kevin George. He's been on fire here in the second uh, half. I can't speak from first-hand account, but I know shooters kind of get that feel. They get a feel like hey, every time I get it, I'm gonna, I can make a shot now. Give me the ball. Randy Woods missing. Heard over the back. Going to be called for the rebounding foul as Martin had position. And it's a seven-point ball game. And it'll be Fairfield ball. So suddenly the shot's not dropping. Well, Randy Woods in particular. And again, see if Fairfield tries to get the ball back to George now. And Randy Woods is playing him man-to-man. -man, and he will be all over George for this possession. Jones against Neubauer. Kevin George has had nine points here in the second half. Martin for three. Bullseye again. And we're down to a four-point ball game. Speedy Morris wanted, might want to think about a timeout coming up here. The, the lead has really been knocked down. He knows he gets a TV timeout in the next stop at your place, so he'll probably hold off. You wouldn't think that the three-point shooting of Fairfield was going to bring it back into the game. That will silence you. George has hit three for three and three points. Shots here in the second half, and the team is now four for four in the second half. Johnny Jones to Henderson. There was contact, and we're going to get a foul called against Fairfield. But Johnny Jones on the pass off. Milko Levers hung in, took the offensive foul. Timeout early in the second half. The Stags hanging tough, trailing by seven. Why does Marine Midland work so well for so many? You can talk to us. Talk savings with Lynn Welsh. Her interest has helped hundreds earn more interest. Education, see Linda Gilbert. She's put 1,300 kids through college, including two of her own. It's not just billions in assets or hundreds of branches that make us what we are. Marine people do it so well because they do it so much. So let's work it out together. See Bill Ryan. He spent the last five years thinking retirement for folks like these. Admiral and Lady Billingsley of Devonshire. Lord and Lady Atherton of Sussex. Sir Alfred and Lady Sheffield of Dunsmore. And Bob of Buffalo. New York Lotto. Hey, you never know. Miller Jr. and Dress. Oh, my dear, I gotta get out of here. So remember every picture tap star is on there. Every picture tap star is on there. You'll pick it up, man. 
to go into the huddle there for LaSalle, Speedy Morris, trying to get his team to go out and play the three-pointers. Kevin George and Johnny Jones both making a couple of threes, and Craig Martin involved. George, three of three in his second half, 11 points, all three threes. Team is four for four in the second half. Again, Paul Cormier's squad has gotten back into this ballgame by making the threes. Well, Fairfield shoots a lot of threes, Whitey. They've been behind in a lot of games. In fact, they have taken the second most uh, number of three-pointers in the league, 433. But that pales to the number one team, LaSalle, 721 three-pointers, over 15 a game. And Fairfield's taken that many threes because, as you, we mentioned earlier, they've been behind so much they had to try to get back in the game by shooting threes. Heard missing that three-point attempt. Gets it back again. He'll put it up. And the rebound to George. So LaSalle having a tough time here in the second half. Martin pulling up. 51 to 46. It's a five-point ball game. Fairfield is really shooting the ball much better from the floor in the second half. I mean, this wasn't the same team on the floor in the first 20 minutes. Nine points for Martin. Give credit to Paul Cormier and the great job he's done in his first year at Fairfield. Yeah, the cupboard was just a wee bit bare up there when Mitch Bonagoro got uh, took his leave. They're playing some tough ball right now. Randy Woods with a great move in the lane. Spun away from Kevin George and put it on. Someone has to stand in there and try to take the charge on Woods. It's the first time Woods has really taken control of the game in the second half. 24 for Woods. Off the miss by George. Woods releases. Newbauer looking for him. Good play, Johnny Jones, to get back and tap it away. Johnny Jones and Randy Woods, we talked about them going out. Woods came out of the stands. Woods felt that he got pushed after the play, and he really didn't. What happened was Johnny Jones' momentum just kind of took him into Woods, and he kind of, his body went into Woods, knocked Woods, jumping over the cheerleaders' heads. You could see Woods coming back on the floor. You knew he was going to go after Jones because they've been kind of yep. getting together during the course of the game, you might say. Nicely Here. put, Whitey, getting look, look, together. That was all in the flow. He, he didn't push him on purpose, I don't think, and getting together is about as nice as I can word it. <laughs> Newbauer backing it out, running the show right now. I do want to mention that Johnny Jones did try to shake a hand there, and Randy wouldn't have any. Stripped to the ball, Randy Woods. Good defensive play, George and Barry there. Up court, Kevin George. Craig Martin. Out of bounds. It'll still be Fairfield ball. Blitz, Blitz Wooten had that go off his hand. Fairfield has cut the lead to five, now trailing by seven. They were down by as many as 14 in the first half. Martin with Hurd backing off. George. Randy Woods has such quick hands. And that, again, you talk about the NBA guys. They look at that. They look at the athletic play and how quick you are. Martin over Hurd missing. Henderson has got to come alive offensively. Jones looking inside. Nothing there. So George swings it to Henderson. Wooten all over him. Henderson does not look for a shot for himself. Doesn't look comfortable. Does not look comfortable taking that 15-foot jumper. The time he had Chris Barry before opening the corner, didn't get it to him. Down by seven. Travel Martin will be called for the travel. Good call by the officials. Ron Foxcroft, Jim Hutter, and Leroy Hendrick working the game. And now uh, Colombo will come back into the ball game. Jack Hurd will sit down. Heard really hasn't gotten too much involved in the offense. He's a guy that they need to, you know, get about 20 points out of. Newbauer driving on Kevin George, and George will be called for the foul. It'll be a non-shooting foul. And Tim Schwartz about ready to check into the ball game. And he will replace Barry, so Chris Barry will sit down. Schwartz a couple of big baskets in the first half to keep this close. Colombo looking to inbound. Ray Schultz. Woods from the corner. Blitz Wooten count the basket. That rebound fell right into his hands. He had the position and just put it in. He'll go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. That's a backbreaker because you get Woods to take the shot. And missed by plenty and you have to come up with the ball. And Wooten be in the right place at the right time. Have that rule now where the refs tell all the players to tuck their shirts in. So what they do is Jody Sylvester was telling me last night, they tuck their shirts and then they kind of blouse them out so they're all set to fall out again. <laughs> Wooten now with five points. Good-looking freshman, averaging about five a game. It's now extending the defense a little bit, trapping in the corners. Lead up to ten. It had been down to five. Johnny Jones. Problem with Fairfield, they can't sustain the offense generally. Kevin George missing. They'll hit those three or four that they've done. 
Good the ball deflected by Schultz there. Up court, Wooten missing. Good rebound, Schwartz. Johnny Jones on the break. Nice pass to Martin. See, at no time in that fast break did Johnny Jones look to the left to Martin. The LaSalle players just assumed he was coming to the right and coming down hard on the left side to finish a play was Craig Martin. Johnny Jones averaging five assists. He's third in the league. Randy Woods is number two. And Randy Woods with another back break of air, a three-pointer to make it 59 to 48. Randy Woods really playing to the crowd. Every time he gets the ball, they're yelling to him to shoot. So if he makes one, he looks right at them. 27 for Woods. Best he's done against Fairfield this year. Henderson, good pass. Schwartz, got to make that shot. And Johnny Jones had it deflected. It'll be still Fairfield ball as uh, Saplicki will come back in the ball game. We'll get a timeout anyway here. We pause for a local break. 11.50 to go in the second half. And LaSalle with an 11-point lead. Baseball fans, don't miss the new series, Baseball's Greatest Games. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. A home run for Gibson. I don't believe what I just saw. Baseball's Greatest Games will bring you the most amazing performances, along with the most incredible victories. Greg Nettles and look at those Yankees. Plus, all the glory of the World Series. Baseball's greatest games isn't just highlights. It's the complete game. When the baseball season ends, baseball's greatest games begins. Each week, a different baseball classic. There it goes, a long drive. If it stays fair, home run. Make this the winter you learn to ski better with tips and techniques from Ski's top teaching pros. Found in this all-new Ski Better Now video, yours free. Call this toll-free number today, and Ski Magazine will send you this video free with your paid subscription of only $11.94. Enjoy a full season of Ski Magazine, America's top-rated magazine for skiers. Beginner or expert, reach new levels of ability. Call today to get Ski Magazine, plus your free video, and Ski Better Now. Sometimes when you have the reputation as a three-point shooter, they just give you the three-point if you're in, the, as I like to say, Mr. Woods' neighborhood. Here you see his foot clearly on the line, yet they gave him three. And if you finish, take the tape out, nothing but cotton, and watch Randy give a look up in the crowd. Boom, right there. The crowd's playing to Woods. Woods is playing to the crowd. Both teams shooting 50% here in the second half, and you see Randy Woods' numbers. Saplicki. Working it inside, Henderson. Let's see if Saplicki can get a couple of threes. Anderson kicked around, knocked out of his hands and off his foot. It's been a rough ball game for Drew Henderson, who's such an outstanding player. First team Mac All-Star. He's a guy, again, you talk about guys you talk, we haven't talked much about Drew Henderson in the second half. Newbauer draws the foul. That's the kind of thing that Speedy Marsh is looking for Newbarrow, and he wasn't getting it. That's why he inserted about 10 games ago Paul Burke. Burke, in, in about 10 games, had five, 55 assists and about 12 turnovers. Yeah, he had a great ratio. And also, Burke, much quicker defensively, had seven steals, for example, in one game. That's what Speedy said. He's going to miss more than anything is his defense. And I thought he was really going to miss a, another player, productive player shooting-wise. But Newbarrow has stepped up his game a little bit today. I think he's looking for his own shot a little bit more. Well, it's really a chance with Burke. They know he's out for the rest of the season. That Newbarrow, who had been the start of most of the season, to really take advantage of it. He has four points. I think Speedy's hoping in the back of his mind that he can make any kind of run in, in a tournament that he might get Burke back for a game or two. Well, Newbauer also an outstanding student, Whitey, as we've seen quite a few of them today. Dean's List, almost a 3-6 in finance oh. at LaSalle. Oh. Maybe he can be your accountant. When he gets older, <laughs> he'll help you count your money. He was on the Mac All Academic team last year. Henderson draws three players around him every time he got the ball there. They've done a good job sealing him off, and they haven't gotten the ball really inside him. That's why the perimeter shots had been open earlier in the second half. Oh, look at Randy Woods. Looks back. It says, I'll softly put it up. He looks back and he smiles. Oh, my. Randy Woods is really playing. He's scored a lot of 29 points now for the senior. He's had 30 or more 10 times this season. 
and he's one point away from making it 11. Martin pulling up. Tough luck. Schwartz puts it in. Well, we talked about the Hal Whistle between games, and you know Randy Woods is the main guy he's here to see, and Randy Woods putting on a little bit of a show. Six points for Schwartz. Neubauer, high post to Woods. Takes the three-pointer, falling away. He's got 32. The people in the crowd are screaming at him to shoot it because they know it's a bad shot, and he shoots it. He doesn't even hit any iron. Well, if Woods stays in this ball game, Whitey, he's got a great chance to break his career high of 46. He's got 32 already. You see, we talk about Randy Woods doing a lot of things. There he is, steal. I mean, Randy Woods is a terrific defender, a team defender, one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know that he's the best defender in the world, but as a team defender, because he knows the passing lane so well, and he comes up with an awful lot of steals, led the MAC Conference in steals this season. And we all know he can shoot. Well, he's got all sorts of career records at LaSalle. Colombo, the freshman. Woods now posting inside against Kevin George. Look how quick he is. Too quick for George, and yes, count the basket, 34 points, and he'll try to make it number 35. Look at Levers, what an emotional, exciting player he is we, there. We talk about that, and I think Speedy's going to get to the point where he's going to try to sit Levers down if he can. Uh, he is, he, Randy Woods was going all the way. No doubt in my mind he was going all the way. George got him from the rear, and you see what the pros like about Woods is he can make different shots. He can make that long bomb. And that time he goes to the basket strong enough to absorb the contact, still kiss it off the glass. So Randy Woods now makes it a 69 to 50 ball game. And see how quick Barry LaSalle just cut Fairfield's heart out. Yep. Didn't take long. Didn't Precision. Even feel the knife go in. <laughs> Scalpel was working very quickly. Off the miss inside from Johnny Jones. This is Randy Woods. Look at that pass to Leverse. Off Blitz Wooten. It wasn't Woods' fault they didn't score there. Down court, Henderson loses the ball. Good play by Jack Hurd to strip him. Jack Hurd not known as a defender. And LaSalle will make a substitution right now. And it's Keith Morris, the son of uh, head coach Speedy Morris, 5'10 on 70 pounds senior guard. Played at Penn Charter High School, one of the high schools that Speedy Morris coached at. Coach did a great, great job at Roman Catholic and Penn Charter. Roman Catholic for years and years had some terrific players at Roman Catholic. See if they give him the hoop here. No basket. I guess it was a clean block. I thought it might have been Golton. Yeah, Speedy was at, at Roman for years, then he was at Penn Charter, then he was the women's coach at LaSalle before uh, becoming the head men's basketball coach. He certainly paid his dues, Speedy Morris. And coached the women. He was 45 and 17 in a couple of years. And, and look at the percentage he's had. I think he's got a percentage of almost 75% coaching at LaSalle. He won 100, his first 100 games as quick or quicker than anyone in history. And, uh, you know, he, he has also had some pretty good players over the last couple of years. As we see Leavers sit down, and I bet Leavers is finished for the night now. If you think he had Lionel Simmons, one of the top players picked in the country, then he had Overton, who everyone thought would be a first-rounder, was not. Randy Woods certainly is going to be a drafted player, possibly as high as the first round. Henderson with seven points, but only one bucket. Tipped away by Martin and Hurd recovered. And in the foul lane, we have a foul call. Randy Woods that time with the long pass. Just lucky to have Hurd get up with the ball, come up with the ball. Hurd probably should have shot the ball. Well, the winner of this game will go on to play tomorrow in the semifinals against the winner of the Siena-Niagara game, which will take place at 7 o'clock tonight. That'll be Should a have a big game. crowd here. Will be a big crowd here tonight. And uh, Bruce Schroeder's play, or lack of play, could really turn the game. And Niagara's a team like Loyola that had really been playing well the last three weeks of the season. Hurd will get another free throw. Jack Hurd with 12 points. A little quiet tonight, this afternoon. And he started 121 games in a row. What a career he's had. And always playing in the shadow of somebody else. Somebody else, exactly. Always playing in someone else's shadow. Michael always Simmons, Doug Overton, Randy Woods. Always a very productive player. George. It was George's three-point shooting that got Fairfield back in this game. They cut the deficit to five, you remember, at 51-46. They now trail by 20. Anderson tied up again. Good interior defense. They've done a great job the entire inside. Game. There have been very few easy baskets for the Stags. The only time they really got into the flow scoring is when they were making some threes. And you know, you, you live by that and you die by it. They haven't been able to, to get George or Martin in position for three in five minutes. And at times that's been a weakness of LaSalle teams in the past, their interior defense. 
Off the miss from Kevin George. Keith Morris got the rebound. And Randy Woods. Heard looking inside to Wooten, guarded by Henderson. Schwartz. Don't think that's the shot Speedy wanted at this point of the game. Craig Martin. Kevin George against Randy Woods, and Woods reaching in looking for a steal will commit a foul. Leavers, Milko Leaver's going to come back in the ballgame. It's the second foul on Woods and the third on the team. Now, Leavers didn't stay on the bench very long, did he, Whitey? No, it's kind of surprising because I would think it, it, it's all possible he wants to rest Leavers because I don't know that he feels Leavers can play three hard games in three nights. As we mentioned earlier, LaSalle won the regular season championship four years in a row. Lost last year in the semifinals. Up court, Kevin George stripped away. Martin open for three. And Randy Woods fouled. Gets booed again by the fans here, but he'll have another day to come back probably with the lead of 20 and 8.14 to go to add to his impressive totals impressive career numbers he's certainly a candidate you'd have to think for the john wooden award the player of the year award kind of season he's had and they have that award that six foot and under award, the barry landers award he has to, <laughs> i would My think kind of guy i would think he'd be involved in that too randy with 35 points he's had 40 points this year against loyola 37 against manhattan and st peter's those are his highs against mac opponents He's the kind of guy that, you know, you hate to play against, but you'd love to have him on your team. The, the opponents, the fans really don't like him, right? I mean, let's face it, it comes right down to it, but to have him on your team has to be a joy. Bernie Saplicki will place Craig Martin. And, he will, and we know he has a pile of assists, you know, and the only time, the reason he might ha not have some assists is because his, his own teammates didn't finish the play. <laughs> he's had 11 rebounds twice in a game. In fact, he's... 10th in the conference in rebounding at 5, 11 and a half, averaging over six rebounds a game. That's really incredible. I think he's about to take his first seat of the day. 37 points for Randy Woods, and he will sit down and gets a hand from the LaSalle fans. And behind us, some of the Boers, but he got a nice hand from the LaSalle. Everyone else is against him except that contingency up there in section Sometimes 104. Sometimes that sparks certain players. Why do they really play to the crowd oh, that way when it's against And him? Woods, that is absolutely the case for Randy Woods. Schwartz missed the layup, but got fouled on the rebound. He looks as if he's playing against the five guys on the floor and however many thousand people are in the stands cheering against him. They're all against him. And he plays a lot harder. Dave Simpson and I spoke off the air at halftime saying, this crowd is crazy. They're going to try to start picking on Randy Woods. Randy did an internship, I think, in uh, one of the uh, criminal... He's a criminal justice major and did an internship I think uh, the DA's office this past uh, fall Kevin George missing and Schwartz will hunt it down Back to Saplicki Fairfield can't buy a shot over the last seven minutes I think these, this is probably the kind of game these two teams have played all season it looked like it was kind of close and then all of a sudden before you know it it's double digits and it's over it was down to five and now they finally get a bucket. Simplicki hitting the outside shot. A guy they missed, Whitey. I know you didn't see him play last year. He was a really good freshman. Made the all-freshman team. Scott Satiller. And uh, Scott averaged over 10 points a game for Fairfield. Uh, medical redshirt this year. He'll be back for Paul Cormier last year. A real tough uh, Bruce Schroeder type kid. 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, will rebound and score from outside as well. Yeah, the Fairfield team will be better next year. I mean, uh, Drew Henderson, their main guy, will be back rebounding again next year. Oh, to be the coach's son in a 20-point blowout. Keith Morris hitting the shot. And the crowd buzzing. The LaSalle Rooters. Kevin George working over to Bernie Saplicki. Don't forget, tomorrow, women's doubleheader at 430 You'll catch all the action here on Sports Channel. Schwartz stripped to the ball by Jack Hurd. Wait a second. Wait a second. You said women's doubleheader. Women's final. Okay. Maybe I meant we're going to have a doubleheader of men. Oh, all right. I thought we had two doubleheaders tomorrow. <laughs> Someone didn't tell me something. We've got a long enough day tomorrow as it is. Time out on the court. LaSalle leading by 22 with under seven minutes to go. If you are living to today's beat, you'll love the Limbo Maniacs, Per Ubu, and 14 other new music artists on Music Matters, the free CD that's yours only from Details, the men's magazine for the 90s, written to today's beat. We cover the music scene from every angle and hit the world's streets to find the styles you want to wear. We interview those who are cool and those who are hot. 
and our features take you from a cross-country trek with Nicolas Cage to the front lines of today's most provocative events. Details captures the excitement of sports from courtside to trackside to mountainside and makes you laugh with comics you won't find in the Sunday funnies. Details for every man who wants the best the 90s have to offer. Subscribe now for just $1 an issue and get the Electrifying Music Matters CD free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-433-5300 to order details and get your free CD today. <laughs> Al Morganti. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Glenn Macnow. Hey, I've got all the answers. Honest. Jason Stark. Nobody understands sports better than I do. Angelo Cataldi. Who needs these guys? I should have my own TV show. Fenway. Opinions, arguments, and a dog. What more do you need? The Great Sports Debate, every week, exclusively on PRISM, the channel with a better variety of sports. Stag has been a little bit of di dissected here in the second half. Yeah, we saw the flying stag there. We didn't get a chance to get it on film. That's the only stag that's flying so far this afternoon. Did he go from a deer to a doe there, Whitey? <laughs> doe a deer. <laughs> You're not going to sing for us, are you, Whitey? That's where I draw the line. That's tomorrow. <laughs> Anything for a buck, but not that. Uh, anything for a buck, get that, anything for a buck. Henderson continues to struggle from the Stay field. Stay with me, Barry, stay with me. <laughs> Try to watch the game here. <laughs> and the spin move by Ron Holland. And it's now 78-54. This was 51-46 to at one point. Wow. This, this was, was a five-point ball game, right? 22-8, and Randy Woods is back on the floor now to go for 40. Henderson inside. George gets fouled. Well, Randy Woods has had a tremendous season and a tremendous career. Prop 48 success story. Well, four times he's been Mac Player of the Week this year. And is the Mac Player of the Year following in the footsteps of some other great LaSalle players. Lionel Simmons did it, what, three years in a row. That was remarkable. Of course, last year, Mark Brown of Siena was Player of the Year, and he's playing in the CBA, Mark Brown. Uh, uh, let me guess, for Albany. That's right, the Patroons right here in this building. And even last year, you talk about LaSalle, and Overton was really probably halfway through the favorite to win the Player of the Year, and he hurt his ankle, and he really was slowed by it, and Mark Brown kind of took over. No question, it hurt him in the playoff game against St. Peter's. They lost 64-58. I think if Doug Overton played as good as St. Peter's was defensively, that uh, LaSalle, if Overton was at 100%, LaSalle would have won that game. Take nothing away from St. Peter's because they had a great ball club last year. And Ted Fiore, hoping that he'll be, be great next year. Be good next year. They have a game tonight against Manhattan. How about the Manhattan Jaspers, Whitey? How do you see their chances? Nice pass, Woods, as he spotted Holland underneath, and he got fouled. Well, I think the Jaspers have had a terrific season, and they've never won a game in this tournament. And I think that some people around here, and I talked to a couple of coaches tonight, think that might work against them. I think it can work for them because I think... Uh, I think that Steve Lapis is going to talk to his team about, hey, we have to win this first game. Talk about a possible triple-double. Randy Woods, terrific pass inside to Ron Holland. Ron Holland has cost him a couple of assists. You can't blame that one on the kid. He really got pounded. But back to Manhattan, I just think they have a, they've had a terrific season, and Steve Lapis is going to try to approach this tournament one game at a time. They can't worry about, well, who we're going to play in the final. Hey, they have to win their first-round game, and that's not going to be an easy one. Yeah, no question about it. Holland going for point number six. He's got it. Had a high of 15 against Notre Dame. Played very well against Notre Dame when they really got beaten up inside late in the game when they lost that. He's not played particularly well today. And Speedy had to sit him down yep. for not making a layup early. Johnny Jones working it back out to Craig Martin. Kevin George. Good defense by LaSalle. Jones good dish off. And it's put up and in by Chris Steele in for the first time. 6'7", sophomore from Southington, Connecticut, averaging only three a game, playing about eight minutes. Jeff Neubauer, very quietly, he's played a pretty good ball game on the point. Doesn't turn the ball over, Whitey, as you said. They had very few turnovers, LaSalle, in the first half, and they've had very few here in the second. In fact, for a team that has so many possessions, well, they did turn it over 11 times, but... No, 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 five times. Five, okay, I was just reading the stats. I didn't think they did. Speedy Morris said to Jack Kerr, Jack, there's no hurry now. You don't have to try to force the ball inside. Martin guarded by Neubauer. Steele. Goes up with the left hand. For Steele, maybe a fine. Paul Cormier will be happier as the years go by when you get, you get your own players in position. 
being a first-year coach, for the most part, you're playing with someone else's players, some recruited to play maybe a different style, and he wants to, his team to play hard defense. That's the style of play he wants to portray at Fairfield University. And, uh, it's going to hurt him maybe this year, but in years to come when he gets his people in place, they'll be a much better team. Paul's a, a terrific, terrific young coach. And he should be a good recruiter. Ah! Pass intended for Wood. Strip knocked away. One of the real nice guys in this crazy business. Kevin Block. George with a fall away. The block is called, and I think the basket's going to count too. No, no basket. Nope. They're not going to call. NBA would be the continuation, but they're not going to call it. Good call by the official here. You see that the foul happens, boom, right there. Hasn't even attempted a shot yet. Fourth foul on Neubauer. Not many fouls called in this game. Officials want to go to dinner. Yeah, I mean, Fairfield <laughs> only committed four team fouls in the first half. Martin from downtown. Heard looking for the baseball pass. It wasn't there. Let's call that Woodstown. <laughs> Woods. Neubauer. Over to Hurd. Holland. Randy wants the ball. He says, I'm going to come out and get that ball right now. And the crowd wants him to shoot. 4.20 to go, and it's a 20-point LaSalle lead. There it is. Woods will try another three and hit it. That's 40. And that'll be, I assume Speedy will take him out of the game shortly. Got his 40 points here. And look who gets to come in. Fourth time this year he's hit 40 or more. Johnny Jones outside at a high of 42 against California. Off the miss, heard up court. Wood says, I've got a chance for two more. And it's 42 for Randy Wood. The thing about it is now is he's, he, he, you don't want to embarrass the team, the people you're playing against. And Woods, Randy's playing so much of the crowd now, he, you, know, you don't want to embarrass people you're playing against at any point in time. Well, this is his all-time high in the Mac right now. Johnny Jones to George in the corner, and George hits the three. It was Kevin George's three-point shooting, Whitey, that got him back in this ballgame early in the second half when he hit three in a row. Time out on the floor, 3.23 to go, and the Explorers are heading to the semifinals, leading by 22. Minolta introduces only true autofocus binoculars when you hold the AF button down you hold continuous focus and never miss a second of the action the world's only true autofocus binoculars only from the mind of Minolta Albany, the capital of New York State, in the capital Saratoga region, discover its many advantages. From historical architecture to today's futuristic Empire State Plaza, join us for our many family events and festivals along the scenic Hudson River. Professional sports abound and are one of the many year-round attractions. Or spend an evening enjoying the performing arts, from Broadway quality shows to symphony orchestras. Be our guest. For information, call 1-800-622-8468. In today's business climate, a luxury suite at Spectrum 2 is part of what it takes to be successful. The privacy and comfort of a suite makes you feel special. The service and the food are wonderful. And best of all, there's an incredible view of Flyers and Sixers action. My company just signed up for a suite in the new arena. It's good for our business and it's great fun. Whether you're interested in a suite or super box seats, call today. Well, Randy Woods, in the two games played earlier this year, had a combined total of 41 points. Tonight, in this one game, or this afternoon, he's had 42 points and an impressive line there, Whitey. Yeah, and and uh, four assists is kind of misleading because he had some, some many other good passes he threw to either Holland or someone else didn't finish the play. And pretty good numbers for an afternoon. And he'll have a chance to up those numbers tomorrow night. You'll see him here on Sports Channel as LaSalle will take on the winner of the Siena Niagara game. So Bruce Schroeder on crutches walking, possibly getting treatment for the game tonight coming up at seven. He got treatment last night. He got treatment earlier today. And I'm sure he's back here at the, the Knickerbock Arena to get more treatment. And, you know, they really would like Mike Dean. He would love to see him play tonight. Todd Holland missed that last shot. The senior captain playing in his final game for the Stags. Hello. 
Hurd, who's had a tough time, has not shot well. Where'd that shot come from? Chris Steele up court to Siplicki. Olive recovers Travel. and travels. We'll get a substitution for LaSalle right now. Mike Bergen in the ball game. First time he'll be in. The 6'4", 200-pound junior from College Park, Maryland. One of the few players not from the state of Pennsylvania. He and Neubauer, the only two, I believe, not from Pennsylvania. Boutique Colombo, heard in Virginia. All right, yeah, Colombo, so they've got three. Neubauer against Craig Martin. Milk Gold Leavers. All right. Well, he's, <laughs> he, he's adopted uh, That's Pennsylvania, right. the milkman from Amsterdam. Morris will try another outside shot. And Martin with the rebound. So the Fairfield season winding down. Martin will bank it up. Holland to follow. Blocked by Wooten. Jack Hurd on the bench right now as we have uh, yet another LaSalle substitution in the ball game. Morris inside to Wooten. Spun out. Schultz couldn't get it and Holland gets it. Jack Hurd sitting down Whitey. Four for 11 from the field. Just 13 points as Bernie Saplicki will miss. They're going to need a bigger game from Hurd tomorrow, obviously, when they either play Siena or Niagara. Yeah. You can't expect Woods to give you 40 every time I was out. No, and, and that's a reflection also on Hurd. If Woods doesn't get 40, 42 points, Hurd probably would get the ball more and get more shots. Right now, let's go to Dave Sims with a special guest. All right, thank you, Barry. Diane Nolan joining us right now, the Fairfield women's coach, defending champions, number three seed. They're going to play right after this game. You guys have St. Peter's. How's it look? Well, they beat us twice in the regular season, and last year we beat them by one point for the MAC championship, so it's going to be a very close game. Who are some of your leading players? Trish Elser, she's our leading center, first team all MAC, averages about 19 points a game, followed by Sue Bly, who's averaging about 13. All right, you guys run a lot or what? what how do you play? We're going to run a lot, we'll press a lot, and try to play real good half court defense also. All right, good luck. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thank you. Diane Nolan, Fairfield coach, they're going to be playing right after this game. We'll have the championship of the uh, women's division tomorrow here on Sports Channel. Let's get back to Barry. Thank you, Dave. And LaSalle has advanced. LaSalle having a great year, and we're anxious to see them play tomorrow afternoon at 431. Yeah, they'll be in the final. They have a terrific play, as I said earlier, Jennifer Coles, and also a, a, a guard that I really enjoy. You know me, I like watching those point guards. Mimi Harris, oh, she's a quick. terrific point guard, deliver the ball, and a real spark plug, out, outgoing type player, and she keeps everybody else in line. And put it this way, she'd scare me at home. <laughs> Manhattan gave them a struggle this afternoon. Manhattan hung tough. They got a strong Kathy Solano's club late in the season and uh, hung in there real well today, but lost the game. Steele knocks it out of bounds. And LaSalle will inbound with a minute seven to go, leading 85 to 64. Very similar to the other previous games, the two games played when they won by an average of 19 points. Holland up court to Steele. And Wooten with under a minute to go. This is your basic trash time. Bergen pulling up too hard. And Saplicki's got it. They've got a break going. Four on two here. Saplicki looking for Steele. Got it knocked away. And Randy Woods, the story this afternoon, with 42 points. That's his all-time high in a MAC conference game, Whitey. Well, they had the game a couple years ago against Loyola and Merrimack. 46, I think. And Dougie Overton had 45, and I think Hurd had about 28. <laughs> Unbelievable. Of course, LaSalle leaving the conference this year. This and they there. lost, mind you. No, they won that game. I'm sorry. They, they won. It was St. Joe the night before. They lost on a Bo Kimball 50-footer. LaSalle would like to leave the conference. Go out the winner. They'll be playing in a new conference next year. A lot of controversy over them leaving. Some people thought off he thought it was good. Some felt that uh, it was bad. And Colombo showing that he can hit the outside shot. Lutiki Colombo. A lot of three-pointers in this game for the Explorers. First points for Colombo and Saplicki will miss. And Holland tips it in. So the senior in the final basket of his career comes up with the bucket. Bergen will try a three. Everybody tries threes. He, he, he shot a two-pointer from three-point range. <laughs> <laughs> Time running out. Willard over to Saplicki. Final shot of the game. And that's it. The Explorers of LaSalle 
with an 88 to 66 win as they beat the game Fairfield Stags by 22. Paul Cormier, who spent a lot of time in Philadelphia as an assistant to Roley Massimino, shaking hands. And you can bet that Fairfield next year will be a lot better club. He's on the recruiting trail already and has a couple of good players for next year. You can't, I don't think you can name names, but he's had a good recruiting year so far, and he's just hoping it's going to get better. So I, I think that Paul Cormier, he's too good a young coach, and Fairfield's a great situation to play in for a, for a college kid. We've been up there. They get good crowds and a, a good following. Paul Cormier's team, the Stags, they will be back, and uh, they'll be playing well another year or so. Speedy Morris' club wins number 18. We'll be back in just a moment. Make this the winter you learn to ski better with tips and techniques from ski's top teacher. The crowd files out. The explorers have won it, 88 to 66. And now it's time, Whitey, to take a look at our Minolta shot of the game, brought to you, of course, by Minolta cameras. Check out Randy Wood's feet. You want to know if he has NBA range? Here he is, well behind the NBA three-point line. Ladies Boom. He has NBA range. 42 points for Randy Woods. And speaking of Randy, he's standing by along uh, with his coach, Speedy Morris, and our Dave Sims. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. And uh, Randy Woods, 42 points. Uh, today spurred on a little bit more. Crab got on you pretty good, right? Well, I was in one of them zones today that I couldn't miss. And, you know, teams were setting some good screens. And, you know, coach kept telling me to square up and shoot, you know, with some elevation in my jump shot. And that's what I was doing. I was coming off the good screens and squaring up couple of the early shots you maybe weren't getting up uh, on your elevation? Uh, no, I was just turning around shooting, you know, which normally, you know, I usually don't do. But, you know, they got me on and the crowd started getting on me. So that really inspired me to, you know, play well and play harder. Indeed. Randy Woods, great job. And uh, Speedy, congratulations on the win. Do you worry about when your your best player has the crowd ragging him pretty good and you think that he might get out of control? Did that cross your mind? Well, you know, we talked about that a number of times because they get on Randy a lot. And, uh, you know, they only get on the good players. And I try to tell them that, you know, and uh, uh, you beat them on the scoreboard. Uh, uh, and after the game, give them a friendly wave. But you can't be worried about it. Uh, you just go out and play. And uh, good things will happen when he plays. And, and there's no one in this conference as is, is, is good as him. And, uh, you know, he, he's such a fine player. When he starts worrying about what people are saying or thinking or, or doing, you know, it takes away from the good things he can do. Comfortable win, too. Jack Hurd didn't even get off, and you still win nicely. That's a nice win. I don't really think we played that well, but, you know, we're better than uh, Paul's team. They're young, and I think that I think that next year, Dave, that uh, Fairfield's going to be one of the better teams in the MAC. I really believe that. He's recruited well, and uh, he's got some good kids coming back. I love Drew Henderson, and uh, some of those other kids are, are pretty good players. Uh, we're better than them, and that's why we won. Uh, now, the next next two nights, we're going to have to play a little better together and uh, and... and get some uh, intensity on defense. And if we can do that, we can win this thing. All right, guys, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Back to Barry Landers. Thank you. All right, Dave, thanks very much. The LaSalle Explorers move to the semifinals with an 88-66 to 66 victory. And I'd have to agree with Whitey when he says we've got to play a little bit better. They need a better performance from Jack Hurd. Leverhurst gave him points. But if they play Niagara tomorrow, they're going to play a physical, strong power team. If they play Siena, they'll have the crowd against them. And if Bruce Schroeder is able to play, Siena could be very tough. The crowd's going to be against LaSalle in every game they play in this tournament, whether they play Siena or Niagara. They're going to have to play better tomorrow. They're going to have to play better perimeter defense. Uh, and they have to also keep on banging the boards like they did tonight. So, Whitey, Kevin Houston had 53 points. We saw the younger uh, brother of Kevin Houston, Jerry Houston, play earlier. Iona won today. Uh, your final thoughts on the doubleheader? Well, I think it was a good doubleheader, and, and tonight's doubleheader that we will not have on the air will also be a good one, but tomorrow is when it really all happens. We have the, the women's single championship game at 4.30, which should really be a lot of fun, I think, for the both of us, and also for the girls playing in the game. And then we have a great doubleheader. The semifinal doubleheader is always the, the best night in a college basketball tournament. We'll be looking forward to it and hope that you'll join us tomorrow night. And the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference Game of the Week is a copyrighted production of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference and is produced by Global Sports, the new creative leader in sports television. The executive producer of Global Sports is Jim Drucker. And the Iona meeting Manhattan in the other semifinal game.